Hello everyone, Attack Bower here for the final game of the Division 3 Finals of the Steel Division 2 Season 10 League. Let's dive right in. So here we are in Bo Burn. On the left, in the red, we have Logie playing 6th Corporal Territorial on Balanced Income. And on the right, in the blue, we have Dennis Diderot playing 26th Panzer on the balanced income. So a wonderful balanced mirror. Oh, we see this so rarely. I love it. Um, I'm not sure what Logie's doing here with these attack beacons, but maybe he's just trolling me personally. Who knows? Um, yeah, I mean, two solid divisions here. 26th Panzer, I mean, all around solid. It's a division that never works for me, to be honest with you, but it is a good division. That's not me saying it's bad. It's just for whatever reason, I can't get this division to work. Um, <laughs> I You get no AT planes. That's definitely kind of obnoxious. Um, it can leave you a little bit lacking in ways to deal with super heavy armor, although you do have Verf Ramens to make up for it. Your your FAMOs are terrible because they run out of ammo after like three planes. It's very frustrating to use them and they die very easily. Uh, outside of that, though, I mean, all around, very good division, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, you get a nice mix of infantry and stuff with your Panzer Grenadier MG26s and 34s and things. So, you know, a, a good division, uh, truthfully, a very good division overall uh lots of panthers and things he's not using the stug m43s which is kind of surprising a very common unit to see because they're pretty cost efficient uh but choosing to take a lot more panthers uh on the other side corporal territorial we've seen this division a lot this season clearly i, I think this one is probably the most popular out of the newest romanian dlc at least at least from the season um, the amount of play it's seen in league uh, i would definitely say second penselos is stronger than this but it's a very good division uh you get an Excellent Romanian infantry. You get some T-3045s in B and C. The biggest weakness of the deck is, of course, your lack of any armor in A phase other than a T-70 Razvedka. So it's very easy to get absolutely, like, balled over in the in A phase uh, and then kind of lose key positions. You also have some of the best artillery in the game in the RD tab. Um, the 100 millimeter super fast firing RD guns are really, really strong. Just a really strong overall division for sure, but it really can't be played Vanguard. Uh, it has to be, you know, really balanced, I think is the best for it, but balanced or Maverick if you're looking for that more aggressive tilt. Um, yeah, mirror income though, so no one's going to have any significant advantage. It's going to come down to who trades better. Um, Bo Burr being a river map, one of the more, definitely one of the more tolerable river maps in the game. This is one of the better designed river maps because you actually have plenty of places to cross. There's five bridges. Um, you can also just like walk across in any place you want. So it's not like you are limited to these five bridges, although we generally see only few places get walked across. But here we go. Let's see where we're all going here. Uh, Dennis going for an aggressive push into this red flag. Very common to see that. Uh, even trying to get over the bridge over here as well. Uh, in response to that up north, it looks like Logie's going full defensive once again. We saw him play very passively in game four. If you didn't see that one, go check it out. It's a great game. But uh, yeah, he, he traded incredibly well, but just played so passively. He lost because he just didn't capture any flags. Uh, down south here, we see Dennis deploying a lot more conservatively. On the other hand, Logie here going more aggressively. This flag is very easy to capture for red with faster units uh, because blue has to like go all the way around to get there. Uh, usually this hill is a pretty heavily fought over and contested area, but uh, Dennis making no attempt to get there. Uh, and, and that's actually lucky for Logie because he really wasn't sending that much here. Usually people would commit a lot more to that position. ZB53 in, but Flammenwerfers have gotten by. 45 mil will fail to catch anything out. Uh, Schwadloza won't do well. The Flammenwerfer drive out of range. Minotaur de Dakota, do get out in time. Do not die to the Flammenwerfer. The Flammenwerfer finds the ZB53 MG42 on it now, though. Yeah, it's not good. Machine gun probably going to go down. Focke 190 in already. Or immediate bombing strike. Although SDK is dead, going down to the 45. That's a big kill. Uh, her kill mostly kills that Pentagram inside as well. 45 does go down to the Afaka Wolf, though. ZB53 will lose against the MG42 all day long, especially with the reinforcements coming in here down south. Uh, the Logi, Logi's M42 gun, uh, M32, excuse me, kills off the SDK of Zed. Really nice kill there. Will it pick up the Pentagram as well? That'd be really bad. But it's going to be having, it has its APCR on, so it won't kill it immediately. Panzer IV getting found by the Breda. Breda will kill that very quickly. Down it goes. Takes one hit itself, though. Pretty good damage there. And armor crack. Kills the SDK of Z251, but the Panzer Guns come out with six because it did less damage. We see two C70s pushing across. They can handle the Panzer III. Uh, just so much going on here. Svaloza should pin down the Pioneers. Svaloza are pretty horrible. 
Uh, one of the worst machine guns in the game, in my opinion. But I think factually it is one of the worst ones. It's not the worst, but it is one of the worst. As he gives it, trying to push up the hill here. We do have a Venatori Dakota coming in. There's a Breda gun, so that can easily clean this stuff up. Panzer III does find the 45 mil. That goes down. T-70 finds the Panzergren, though. And uh, the Moti pushing through here. Moti really strong. They're basically Panzer Grenadier MG-34s with a TNT. Uh, that, that's essentially what they are. Uh, there's no other way to describe them. And they're 12 men. They're actually they're, they're noticeably better than a regular Panzer Grenadier squad. Uh, Venatori Dakota do get caught out by the Pioneers. Not going to get their uh, Panzer Shrek on target. They're going to hide out. BF-109 coming in for a ground strafe run. Not a fan of this play. BF-109 G2s are not good ground strafers at all. They're terrible, actually. So that's kind of just a waste. T-70 goes down to the Panzer III. T-70s can kill the Panzer III's and IVs, but they got to be up closer. They you cannot win at range. So Grenadier Kalari coming in here to push across the river. This is not super helpful. This flak is really deep. You might be able to grab this one. I'm not a huge fan of this push here other than grabbing this flag. The F-109 G2 is still going for it, though. This time catches the Panzergren out in the open. Does a lot more damage. Uh, Panzer Shrek does kill off the SDKFZ, so that's a nice kill there. Grand Chetty Kaladi with its triple machine gun should be able to pin down these Panzergrens pretty quickly, but the Pioneers are going to finish off this Venatori and surrender those. Although, Grenade gets off from the Venatori. Oh, and pins them! Pioneers couldn't throw them because, of, because they were moving, so they couldn't throw their own grenade. And the Venatori will surrender the Pioneers now. What a, what a flip there by Logie. Nice play. Venatori Dakota, it's here. It just didn't unload. It's probably just out of range, although now it would definitely be in range, but Logi not bringing in his stuff and unloading right away. Breda should be able to finish off this 250 easily. Should be an easy kill. These Breda guns so great. Their fire speed insanely fast. Kills that off without trouble. Gunnachetti Kaladi has no AT, but they do have the little grenade they could throw inside, but can't get in range in time and they'll go down Logie really needs to start unloading his transports or like queuing them in with an unload order because he's missing a lot of stuff because of that Logie now on the 1311 though with this flag and recapturing his own these SDK of Zed's all over the place causing quite the issue but we've seen most of them a lot of the I think this is the last of them already Dennis has used them very aggressively. Bakuwa coming in for that Breda gun he definitely wants that dead because it's covering off the hill here with the help of the Kadarashi Panzergren versus Karadashi Moto. Down goes the Bredegun. Nice kill there. BF-109 can't get on the back. Oh, can it? It might. How fast is the Focke Wolf? 530, BF-109, 620. So it definitely can catch it. That's not the issue. It, it cannot head on this Focke Wolf, though. If it does, it will die. BF-109 G2, the one bonus of this thing, it is very maneuverable. And it's showing that right now. Bockwolf F8 does have medium resilience, and it has a nice loadout. It, again, it will kill in a head-on, but now it's smoking, so it no longer will. Looks like Logie Dennis is making a run for a BF-109 chasing after. There's no AA to do anything. Karadashimoto is essentially a better Panzer Grenadier because of its availability curve. Not because of its stats, but because of its availability curve. It has a higher availability curve, so you can bring them in with veterancy and still have the same number. Bomb of Effort holding off in here. And this northern hill, pretty well defended at this point. None of this light armor will be able to just push through. We do see an 81mm mortar, though. BF-109, I think, missed its kill on the Focke Wolf. So unfortunate there for Logi. t 70 is finding some targets here, finding that Pandagren. Doesn't do a lot of HE damage, but it should be able to at least stop this Pandagren deer. Kaladashi Molto, not in a great spot. It is moving to do something. 60mm mortars are in now. It's a very dangerous spot for them. I would at least move them up to here. BF-109, though, flying around with impunity. 60 mil mortars might kill this off. Oh, the T-70 can certainly do the job. Yeah, I think he pressured that, that SDKFZ a little too soon because he was about to fire his 60 mils, and now they're going to miss completely. Panther 3 moving forward. Finally, Karadashi Moto. Logi on that 1311 and happy to sit there on it. Sherm Pioneer creating quite the salient. Lunatus. Ooh, Kanadashimoto just chewing through those pioneers. But the uh, SDKFZ 250-9 finding those, putting down an auto cannon burst, doing some nice damage. Pioneer Fear coming in with the uh, SDKFZ 251-10, the little pack gun. Building goes down, Kanadashimoto forced out. Minotauri Dakota 
missed? Did it miss? No, it didn't. It, it landed a hit. Takes one of those half tracks out, but misses the 250 slash nine, which is obviously the, the real prize there. Still no AA out of Logie. I mean, out of a Dennis. There's an SDK Z71. We'll absolutely cream this BF109. It'll probably die, actually. Again, yeah, not a fan of Logie using this as a ground strafer, especially because now he's going to lose this plane. Yeah, he, he kind of deserved that one. That was a little... It wasn't even doing anything. T70 still on APCR, but does finish off that SDK of Z. Needed that kill badly. Pandagran in the house is going to tear through these infantry. T70 Razvedka bounces the first shot of that Panzer IV. Gets a loader wounded crit. That's the other thing with this. Is it's just so many criticals coming out of this thing. Keeps changing target. Cannot decide what to shoot at. Was going to go after the STK of Z71. Cannot get on target in time. Will the Panzer IV kill it off? It doesn't. And oh, it does so little damage. Here comes the, T the 60 mil mortar going after the Panzer Grand. APCR misses. Yeah. And finally, the Panzer IV goes down. <laughs> oh. We're seeing the effect of the 60 mil mortars already. These things are absolutely insane. We've all seen how good they are in my recent videos where people absolutely slap me with them. Hotez, great little fighter, uh, fighter bomber here. Out, It's not really a fighter bomber. I shouldn't say that. Great little medium bomber. Medium resilience, quite zippy at 480. Uh, nice bomb load out of 200 kilogram bombs. There's a lighter one or two. Lieutenant VM here. Getting caught out. He doesn't really want that. Has a nice sniper. It can fight for itself, but he obviously doesn't want that to die. Track spoken on the Panzer III. It's not going anywhere now. T70 feeling like the big boy on campus right now. But we uh, still in A phase. So no one's getting anything special yet. The big thing is Logie unlocks his armor in B phase. That That's the key here. It's not any sort of income thing. It's simply that Logie gets access to his real armor assets, which are good. I mean, they're T30-485s. And if I had to be stuck with only one tank, I, I do think that's the one I would pick. If I had to be stuck with only one type of tank, the T-34-85-1944 variant with the 2K range, not a bad tank to be stuck with. Really reasonably priced. Just kind of gives you all the things you want in a tank for a reasonable price. T-70, running out of APCR. It does have 12 to start, but it's finally running out. But it has taken out plenty of armor assets. 60 mil mortar going after the Pens of Anictungs here. It uh, doesn't look like it's going to do much. Nope. Now, there's a chance the Vernictungs will miss now because of the stress. We'll see how stressed they are. How stressful is their life right now? 81 mil mortar missing. Multi fall back. Cannot kill these armor assets. German Pioneer is moving in. Uh, Sixth Corporal does have Peonity Assaults, which are a really strong double flamer unit. So they can definitely get those in. Lunatis finding those Pioneers. Kadadashi Moto moving in as well. This hill is pretty secure now. Even with that light armor there. Logi on a 1410. Capturing this southern flag. Really nice push for him. You don't see this very often from the red side. So really nice to see a different kind of push. Again, I, I think Babur is a solid map. It does actually have plenty of opportunities to make ground and make aggression. Um, it, it, you can actually do stuff on this river map. It's not like Krupa or something. Pioneer getting their grenade off. That's really bad because, you know, the Moti are full health. The Pioneer was a one-man health squad, so obviously it was basically a suicide bomber to start. 60 mil mortars doing what they do, although missing completely, so I'm not sure what they're going after. Panzer Grand should get wiped out here, and down it goes. Panzer III, eh, going to be a bit of an issue. Not with his Bredagon, though. Bredagon will eat that up. It will eat it alive. Turret stuck now on the Panzer III, along with the track stuck. T-70, though, should finish it off. Oh, misses. Oof. And down the T-70 goes. That's an unfortunate loss there for Logie. Here comes a 155. I'm not sure about this Colin, to be honest with you. He's on the pressure. I would think to just keep bringing stuff in. Keep up his ground attack. Because now all he really had... The Kanadashi could move forward and kill this Panzer III really easily. So he's just chilling out. Sherm Pioneer will lose to the double Moti. Sixty Memorial putting it down on the Pantagrens. Nice use there. Yeah, I, sixty mils getting count. No, the bread, the Rashitsa. We do see our first Rashitsa of the game, getting counter, uh, getting hit here by this eighty-one mil mortar. Yeah, you want to kill those. Those are probably the best AT gun in the game. 
for price and for how much damage it does, this is the best AT gun in the game, without a doubt. Fogwell coming in, yeah, you, you'll want to kill these things. It's not even in, like, a great position. It's just you need them to be dead, and it is. Panzer three down. Breda does what it does and kills that easily. Big loss there for Dennis. Dennis really on the back foot here, because remember, they're both balanced, so neither of them is getting any sort of, like, big income bonus saving moment to come back. 45 mil is not going to do great against this Pioneer. Multi pushing through here, looking for that Sturm Pioneer. Up north, Lunatist still spotting all this. He sees all this stuff. This is not a secret that it's coming. 60 mil mortar going after the SDK of Zed. Pioneer, not great against the Sturm Pioneer, but it does get his grenade off and needs to retreat. It does not. But the grenade goes off in time, but it still gets to surrender. The Sturm Pioneer being dead and surrendering anyway. That was kind of malarkey, but what are you going to do? SD Games, that goes down to the 60 mil mortar. Nice kill there. Potez coming in for the infantry here to kill some of those off. Dennis finally recapturing this flag. Grilla finding... Oh, no, it found Zakadarashi. Ooh. These 60 mils now in a lot of danger. Dubla coming in to now defend. It's a little late. T-3485 Komroti, this is a the 1943 variant, has the 1750 meter range. Kaladashi getting creamed. Logi needs to check this out really fast. He does finally fall back. Pioneer does go down. Kaladashi do have their Panzerfaust, so they can certainly kill this SDK of Zed. Oh, wait, it's not a Panzerfaust. I lied. It's a grenade. It's a grenade, which is worse because it's only 100 meter range. Ooh, 45 mil gets an APCR, and the grenade gets off on the SDK of Zed, kills that as well. Both armors killed, and Logi recaptures this flag. What a nice kill there. T-3045 now in position, going to be an issue. And Dennis bringing in mostly Panthers here instead of lighter art, art, uh, tanks is going to be an issue because he has no way to get in close. He, he only brought in one card of Panzer IVs and A, so he doesn't even have a good way to trade with these T-3045s. Uh, T-3485s are, like, I would actually say probably the best target for Panzer Fours because they're up-trading then, right? We talked about this whole, in the last game, we talked about the fact that Panzer Fours trade down really often, uh, which is bad, right? But against T-3485s, they trade up, which is very good. Now, this Stolstru Breda finds the Lieutenant. He is going to get absolutely destroyed. Stolstru Breda is very solid unit with their six Bredas. They're fantastic. They're still going to lose the Peonidia Assault, though. The Double Flamer are going to do what Double Flamers do. 60 mil Mortar going after the Grilla. They can do good damage to this. The Grilla, an open top unit. And it goes down to the 60 mils. The Breda gets absolutely wiped out by the Peonidia Assault. Breda getting hit by the infantry, but it is triple star now. And it, that means it fires. I don't even know how fast. It fires like 30 rounds a minute. It's kind of nuts. Infantry getting annihilated here for Dennis. About halfway through B phase at this point. Mortar trying to take out that Breda. Focke Wolf coming in. Dubla though. Dubla doing it doubly things. This is probably the best AA piece in the game for price. 75 points. Double 25 mil is absolutely disgusting. I mean, you can see why Sixth Corporal is a very popular division. It's got a lot of strong units. Like, it just has a ton of units that are unique to it that are really strong. Panzergren's finding that Venatori Dakata, though. That's going to get wiped out pretty quick here. There's no other... Well, there is a Katadashimoto, but it's not in a position to help out. Panzer 3 finding the Venatori. Logi has not noticed this push yet. He's going to lose this. He really could fall back and keep it alive. And no, it goes down. Logie missing that micro there. That's because he's working so hard down south. He is capturing this entire hill. Panzer IV went down to the T-70, I think. Verf Ramen in now. Dennis calling that in. Kind of an odd call. Not a big fan of that, especially when he's on such a back foot down here. Is this two coming in now? And uh, Dennis getting a foothold on the north side of this hill. 81 mm work killing off that Kadarashi there pretty easily. Nice kill there. T-3485 coming in, though. This Breda is still a... Well, the 45 mil even is going to kill this Panzer three very easily. Fogwell, though, kills off the Lunatist. There's no Dubla up here. 45 mil still has APCR, but now the Bread is involved, and that's going to be an absolute wipeout. Once it can get on target, there it is. And let the machine gun go. Boom. Down it goes. Very easy kill there. Needs more infantry up north, though, if he's going to hold that off. Yeah, Dennis in a lot of trouble down south. Doing 
okay up north. Not amazing, but okay. Oh, there's a Katadashimoto. Fakawolf doing a huge strafing run there. Katadashimoto versus Panzergren at close range. Technically, they're equal, but the Katadashimoto is healthier and less suppressed. Potez, though, going to swing that whole thing. Down it goes. You have 109 is not going to catch that Fakawolf with this 88 here. Breda getting hit by the uh, mortar. He should have just brought in a Dubla. He is bringing a flak 36 88 mil. Off Claire does go down. Eyeballs are lost there for Dennis. Logan in a very strong position on this southern hill. I don't think he's going to get dislodged anytime soon. Pentamon Nicktoon getting spotted out. I'm not sure how, honestly. The Kadadashi, I guess, see it? No, the Lunatist. Still hiding in this windmill successfully. Very nice play there by Logie to keep that sitting around. Panzer for Nicktoon does get a kill on the Ford. Granite Charity do get out now. Triple Machine Gun should chew through this pretty quick. The uh, G43 is not going to do that much, and down it goes. Panzer Force finding the Peonity Assault. Peonity Assault killing off the off clear, though, killing those eyes. That's a nice kill there. Smoke goes down from Logie nice and quick. And he recaptures this northern flag. Cannot find the 15-9, though. Could probably push across here and capture it right there. Going to be tough, though, with the Panzergren sitting here. You need assault just trying to get in that wood safely. Mortar going after the Schwarlos, of all things. I guess that might just be the only thing he knows is there. Verfram and Strike. Let's see what we're going with. I, I mean, fine. Not great. He's going to kill some infantry. Big whoop. A lot of infantry coming in, though. But going up north because this flag has now been captured. Uh, but because he was able to recap, Logie, I mean, Dennis was able to recapture this flag. He's currently got a Lunatus, though, finally turning on and killing off the Flammenwerfer and uh, Pentavenictung. And the flag, nope, just getting down it goes, finally. And there goes the flag, 15-9, finally for Logie. Pentagram forced out of its... Transport by the Katadashi Moto. Going to take a huge MG42 hit, but the Katadashi Moto pinned from the Verf Ramen Strike. Verf Ramen Strike didn't even do much. Killed the Shvalo, so that's it. 60 mil mortars. Uh, not out of ammo, but they're not doing anything either. 81 mil mortar going after the bread and stuff. 88 not unloaded. Needs to unload. Really should just move it all the way up at this point. Here comes that Faka Wolf, and again, 88 not unloaded. Lunatus is going to die. Swallows will die to the MG42. We do see some arty. I, I feel like this 155 has really not been fired. Whoa! Big first hit. Kills the 81 mil mortar. Very lucky. Very, very lucky there. Oh, I wish my counter battery was so good. That was on Dennis, though, for not moving his artillery. You gotta mark where you're already. You gotta move it. Otherwise, it's likely to just die. T-70 doing some damage to these infantry. Not much, though. He needs a few more infantry here, actually, to reinforce this southern point. Although, I guess there's a lot of support weapons. Back to a 1410, losing this flag. Panzergren are going to have to contend with this Kadadashi Moto at some point. Panzer Fort almost spotted the Pianini Kaladi. Uh, excuse me, Pianini Assault does not, though. They'll get into this this forest here. Kadadashi, Moto, and 60 mil mortar moving in. 60 mil should do quite well taking these guys out. May give him this flag right here. Kadadashi, Moto versus Panzergren. Double star, though, on the Kadadashi, Moto. Faka will forced off by the Dubla. That's what's going to happen every time. And now the Dubla targeting the infantry. Oh, yeah. Oh, the... Oh, oh, oh. Otez might go down to the SDK of Z71, and it does. Nice kill there for the SDK of Z. Definitely needs to kill those off. Those Potezes, again, very strong. He's only got two of them in A, so that was one down. Only one to go. Peony Assault does take out the SDK of Z251. Nice kill there. That's the only thing really holding it off. Now there's the 59 again for Logie. Peony Assault just dodging the sight lines of that Panzergren. Although not this Panzer IV, though. Needs to get it through immediately. Does get by now. Oh, no, he stops to kill the off Claire. Does kill it, but he's going to take more damage from this Panzer IV now. And he's still... He does finally just get out of range. 
There's the 15-9. Okay, uh, Pioneer Assault now. Yeah, kind of... I don't know what he's doing. Throws down some smoke to get in. He, I kind of wish he would wait to get the suppression off. But it's already Dakota, really not anti-infantry units. Again, he's a little light on infantry. This Panzer IV sneaking around. Uh-oh. Could pick up some cheeky reinforcement kills. Verf Ramen Strike going for the Dubla is going to succeed. Oop, there it goes. It might pick up a Zis 2 for fun. As a consolation prize. E right there. And there it is. Nice kill. Peony Assault wipe out the Panzergren despite them being like full health. Nice kill there from that Peony Assault. Good move by Logie sneaking that all the way up. Yak 9B does kill off the Panzer IV Recon there. Nice strike there. I find these to be very inconsistent. I used them in one game a lot, and they didn't even get suppressed, and they often would not kill tanks in a single run, which I think is ridiculous if you're able to actually get these things to do what they're supposed to. Kind of feel like you're owed. If you can get a cluster bomber to cluster something without getting suppressed at all, it should kill things. Only five minutes left here on the clock for Dennis. He's just on the back foot, has not traded well, and has not been able to control space the same way he did in the other game. Stolz Troop Red getting caught out. That's definitely not good. Kadadashi Moto now, but they're out of cover. I mean, they're in yellow cover, but it's not the same as cover cover. Strelke DP we see now because we're in C phase. I'm not a huge fan of bringing Strelke DP in this deck. There's so many other good infantry. It just feels kind of like meh. I mean, if you're really in the market for a 25-point infantry unit, I guess that would be why. Dodges the Flammenwerfer and will get its grenade off as well. So nice play there by Logie. Good micro. 60 mil mortar going after the MG42. Nice choice there. Going to kill that off pretty easily. IL-4 with its big bombs cannot get through the SDK of Zed. We haven't really seen the OB fire much. Bit of a waste. And Dennis throwing in the towel there. He finds himself un... You know, just cannot turn it around. 24 minutes, 16 seconds of a war. 1865 to 1295. Logie winning Division 3 of the Steel Division 2 SDL League Season 10. Congratulations to him. Commiserations to Dennis. Uh, great match from him. Great run making it to the finals. T70s actually tore through stuff, and you really need these to do this in this deck because you don't have any other armor in the beginning of the game. Uh, other than that, Punity Assault doing some good work, but that's about it. On the other side here, Focke Wolf did some nice damage. Very, very good Focke Wolf there. Uh, Verf Ramen, okay. It paid itself off, basically, so not too bad there, but that's it. Uh, really nothing else trading very well, so... Rough game for Dennis, but great match overall for both players. If you guys enjoyed that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, and have a fantastic day.